you know, there's going to be losses. Try your strategies, too. There's yeah. time in this series. Make it happen. <laughs> that time has kind of fallen by the wayside now. Matt's point here for Curse in the best of five quarterfinals versus Counter Logic Gaming. Okay. Facing off against Cloud9 will be the winner of this match. There's one of them. Okay, so there they go. They lost all these games. Boop, they boop, boop, out. Boop, What's boop. been beating us? Sindra's <laughs> gone. Nidalee's gone. Get it. Now, Nunu is still up there. You can trade a Nunu pick, though. Uh, let's see what Curse go to. They're actually forcing Curse to do something else. Right. All this right. Well, they they don't get to steal away the Nunu or trade that. But uh, I still think it was a very good move from CLG. Dropping the Trist ban is probably a bad idea. Uh, yeah. Voiboy on mid Trist, completely successful. It's even been successful when adapted. Froggen did it extremely well as well. Yep. It's just. The champion in mid lane, Tristana shoves waves without having to use mana. And wave shoving right. is a lot what mid lane is about nowadays. So it's very hard for a lot of the mages early on to deal with the shoving of Tristana. Uh, you know, talking to some of the mid players that had to face it afterwards, they're, they're just like, they're, you feel like there's nothing that you can do because you keep having to spend all of your mana to try and keep up with this shoving of right. Trist. And eventually, she, you run out of resources, whereas she just gets stronger and stronger and scales very well into late game. It's, it's one of the biggest harassments to be able to push your lane and harass with like an explosive shot, one after the other. It's consecutive firing that Justana puts on you in lane. Not this time. Not for boy boy. Lulu and Kogma picked up. Safety in shields for somewhat. Safe lane for Seraph coming in here. You know, something we questioned about Seraph as well in the beginning was, was he going to kind of be a plug and play? What are they going to try to do with him? Does he go above and beyond for the team or does he fill the position of a top laner? Mm -hmm. And I do like the the first two picks from CLG because Nunu plus mm -hmm. Lulu has been such a good combo yeah. for a lot of these teams when you not only have the bear, uh, blood boil on your AD carry, but you also stack the on-hit damage of picks. There's a multiplicative bonus that you get there for your AD yeah. carry, and that itself Ooh. turns your carry into a giant, giant threat. So CLG take away the Lulu, and they will protect their Kog'Maw. After the first game, I think this is going to be attack damage Kog'Maw given to double lift, just because the poke style for CLG did not work out. They weren't able to get their poke down before fighting. But, you know, th this is still CLG. They could easily still go with an AP Kog mid. Um, Syndra is banned out this time, right. so he wouldn't get punished as hard in the mid lane. Cops Corky recently has been paired up with that Talon and with that Tristana. Both wins over LNQ and Dignitas in the Super Week 11. Very interesting composition Curse is putting together here. They may decide to go for the AD if they do want to. One thing that makes me think that Curse won't go for a just another okay. adaptation of split pushing is that their AD carry choice this time around, Corky, is about fighting team fights in the mid game. He's not about taking the turrets down as quickly yeah. as Jinx. Jinx plus Nunu just destroys <laughs> them. So uh, Corky makes me think that they're going to look more for those mid game fights where he has a Trinity Force uh, plus, you know, Infinity Edge or Bork, and he is able to just dump out damage. Yeah and they can make use of that Zillion in the mid game where Zillion reviving somebody in the early team fights completely changes the face of the game. Oh boy. Forgot about this guy being up and that guy, Quas to get Maokai. He actually Ooh. played that in their last three games. Three victories in a row for Quas's Maokai Yasuo coming out for another AD on Curse. Talk about team fight combo. Maokai plus Yasuo is a re Ridiculous combo. That is guaranteed team fight prowess right there. Maokai's uh, Arcane Smash does count as a displacement. Yep. Can't set right. off Yasuo. Plus, then he's already in there with his aura running. That is a very, very scary, scary mid game here from Curse. Let's see what CLG decide to uh, use. They only have one pick left with which to counter. A lot oh, riding man, on that here. Is that's scary looking for the early dragons. Early dragons, I would already say, those are cursed territory. If they control the vision, they've got a new new. They should really be able to set that up quite easily. Wild card here is the Evelyn pick from Dexter. We'll see what kind of chaos you can cause with that pick. See if he can actually use the perma stealth to CLG's advantage and get some surprising 
uh, moves in the works for CLG. Oh man. So where's the early pressure coming from? That's kind of what I'm looking for from CLG. If they lose ground in the early game, it's not like they find it. Well, they're, Dexter they're, can help do that if he's in every lane this time. Their Rise scales well, their Kog'Maw scales well. Lulu's a great support um, as far as supports go for scaling well. Uh, Nami and Lulu is great disengage. So CLG, they still, they can, they can still play this, but holy, I, disengaging against a Maokai Yasuo is near impossible, so. And then you got speed up as well if anybody really needs to get back in range oh, from Zillion well, Ultimate. Yeah, exactly. Or Zillion speed up and ultimate. You're right, add that into the Maokai Yasuo combo because that just means Maokai doesn't even have to flash half the time. He's got the speed and a bomb. That's true. Let's we'll see how they utilize it. It's easier said than done as always. The game's about to go live, so head over to Twitter and share your predictions by tweeting hashtag CurseWin or hashtag CLGWin to at LOL Esports. It's going to be a big matchup here. It could mean CLG's really history to keep themselves in the playoff here. Yeah, I mean, they're down to their last match. Must win game here. They have to turn it on right now. Talk about pressure. If they lose this game, the pressure will definitely subside a little bit, but they still have to then play to make sure that they stay in and they don't this have is, to fight a challenger team. This is another aspect of the best of five series though, the length, something that was definitely considered yesterday, a 250 or 150 and then a 60 minute game is that the people start to fall about, uh, apart. We saw that happen to Dignitas. They fell apart after an elongated session of playing. Can that happen or will that happen, I should say, to curse. Jumping into the matchup. Home turf being created by the crowd here for Counter Logic Gaming on the red side. Rally caps are on for CLG fans. Say that again. They are praying. Let's see what CLG can do. Level one here with the Evelyn Mobile Ward scouting. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Defensive line set up. A different start. <laughs> Mana Crystal this time. Okay, so yeah, Rise, Rise versus Yasuo. Mm -hmm. Preferred uh, counter pick for a lot of Rise players. And Link is taking it to the extreme here. Going super aggressive. Mana Crystal start. Going to make his Qs hit that much harder. We'll see how Voiboy is a, able to weather the storm. Kill potential there is definitely for both sides. Uh, so jungler intervention yeah. would be big. Maybe that's where Dexter will make his move. Because Yasuo does have the Rune Prison. Rune Prison is a big part of why people like Rise into Yasuo. I think this exhaust as well from Boy Boy. And so, oh yeah, man. So talking about mid lane exhaust, that is definitely right. my preferred summer spell. Mm -hmm. Just overall, it's so it's so good in so many different situations. Um, even offensively, people underestimate yeah. the armor reduction, and they all often take ignite to you know for those extra kills. But honestly, if you're in a long fight with the on, uh, armor reduction and the slowed move speed. You can sometimes even get more damage yep. out of bringing an exhaust, as long as you're not fighting like a Mundo or something. Uh, we will see here, though, Link once again going mobility for the mid lane. See how it starts out. Curse, repeat, invade, red side. This time around, Dexter's way ahead of the game. Already got his own red invade going. Afro Moo going to come up, and uh, never mind, just watch him do it. <laughs> they will see Kogma bottom, see the lane swap. And let's see how they react to this lane swap. Ward did get placed. They know that there's no mm -hmm. blue start. He got out. Aphromu was in scary territory. So he heads up top. He's going to be giving help here to Seraph. It's an interesting 2v2 matchup here, too. Uh, now that CLG have decided to go with the Lulu plus yeah. Nami lane, because both, all four members are ranged here. Um, and all four of them. Um, have a lot of harass that they can dish out very early on. So the early jump that Cop and X Special got by being in that lane in the beginning because they initiated the swap, not to mention the zillion extra 8% experience, is going to be pretty big. Because if when Cop and X Special hit that level 2, they have a tremendous amount of burst damage. Uh, we'll see how they can use that to their advantage. Maybe mm -hmm. they will force something on Seraph and Aphromoo. But they didn't push very hard. And level two, they're not doing anything. Nope. You can actually see mid lane. Huh. Boy Boy missed one of the two first waves, went back, and he already has a pink and a green here. He was at 10 to 4 in CS, so Link is a bit behind on the pressure Boy Boy is creating. We'll see if that continues. Yeah, one thing a lot of Yasos can do is they try and charge up um, and shove the waves early. Hmm. 
the timing here uh, for the backing for Voy Boy is something that we've seen a lot from actually High. Um, he'll shove very hard and he'll come back with two wards. Usually they're two green ones, but since he's facing an Evelyn, definitely yeah. he wants that pink one to come back with. As we said, this mid lane matchup could turn poorly for him if the Evelyn does show up uh, and there's a room prison. Oh, but hello! Oh, good thing he had an exit on the stage right. Link keeps himself safe there. Good spot by Dexter as well. Top lane aggression onto a special. He's not afraid to stay in these fights and continue providing that utility. Getting out with a sliver. The mage been, fights. Yeah. Of 2014 up top here. Corky's pretty much a semi-mage. <laughs> Um, we'll see there. Instant clear out from that ward. That should signal to Dexter. Mm -hmm. He should take that bit of information because even though he lost his ward and he lost his time going in there, he should take that in me, uh, to mean that there is a pink ward either in the wraith bush or in that back red side bush. And he should okay. work around that from now on. Even when you lose something like a ward, you always have to take every bit of information as a jungler. Jungling's all about uh, ma not only managing the information for your team, but also the flow of information. If you know what your enemy is able to see, then you can feed them misinformation in order to manipulate them. It's one of the funnest things about playing jungle and one of the things that gives them the most power. Nice little job by Link there playing mind games. Runs it, Voiboy, Boy, to get him away from the siege wave so he can easily farm it. Voiboy Boy shares experience with Dominate now. No big moves to be made just yet. Dominate hasn't really been trying to get inside the jungle or find a Dexter, which isn't the easiest thing to do. Dexter's done a good job of keeping himself invisible, but he also has ganked a lot less this time. Doesn't feel like any of the lanes are really going to give him a for sure kill. Yeah, we'll see how the landscape changes once the junglers make their first yeah. returns to base because, well, actually second return to base for Dexter, but uh, Nunu, let's see how many wards Dominate decides to go with. Quillcoat will give him one. Boom, boom. And he stacks up a whole bunch more. So you know the game plan for him. We'll see how Dexter is able to respond. Well, they've already started with the pink. So in that ward war, they feel like they have the defense so far in their pressure. The little pressure they have in the lanes. This, however, 18 to 29 for the top and bottom of how they're swapped around. Quas is having a little harder of a time. A little harder at the time, I should say. Yeah, he doesn't have uh, any support with him, and he's mm -hmm. in the only uh, disparity here. The the top lane is all range champions, but he is melee versus Kogma. Pretty hard for him. Did he miss that cannon because of the wall placement? Just saw that at the very end there. If that was a wall to bl block a cannon kill, that was a masterful move by Voivoy Boy <laughs> to deny some cannon minion money for Link and. As we said, Dexter, great job. Returns back, took the information, kills the pink ward. Dominate, though, has the level two consume. Boy, boy, on the outside, great. Bubble dodge, very nice wind wall as well. Link coming on oh, the outside. Great grab by Dominate. Does the fight continue? Voiboy Boy throws down the exhaust. That's the power. He hardly took any damage from the repeated machine gun attacks of Rise. Beautiful last breath gets the almost entire team of CLG. Curse really can't follow, though. They steal the dragon. They run them off. They didn't even have their AD carry that entire time. And we already saw the first Maokai Yasuo combo. Wow, Voy Boy. Whoa, Curse with a massive, massive outplay right there. Very beautifully done. Cop still full health here. They're ready to stay and stop backs as well if they can. Quas can clean up the mid lane. They're going to be able to <laughs> shut one down, a special, causing a little bit of trouble here. And he's just going to go ahead and say, na 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 na. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's, what's Cop saying? I don't know. Cop's saying, Flash! Oh, and he has the Valkyrie! Cop says, First Blood again for Curse. Wow. Persistence pays off once again for Curse. Special decides to go open door number two, and he fortunately runs straight through the Nami bubble, <laughs> right into Aframu, and uh, performs a masterful bait and switch here, because his AD carry full of mana, able to finish the first blood. What a play, without even trying to orchestrate it from the beginning. Just cop taking control there with Expecial. A little bit of mind games that they'll be playing for themselves. They're loving this uh, tier on the Zillion, though, lately, for support, especially late game Seraph. You usually get to it as well. You've been giving utility and cooldown to your team, so he gets that stacked pretty fast. Looking around the board, still, actually, with all that fighting, we were looking at like an 18 to 25 to 30 CS. 
Quas is caught up to Seraphs now, so it's going to be quite a good force as they bring it to that late game. First Dragon we just saw go in favor of Curse. Again, they get an early lead. Can CLG stop it this time? I don't know, because there's already the, the double vision team right. dominate and uh, special once again invading into the top side jungle, preparing this for red buff. Nope, red buff's already taken. What is it, eight? It's nine minutes already. Okay, so that's a little late for that. But they will be able to catch people in transit if they see yeah. uh, anyone swinging up to the top side. It's an interesting choice to go for that vision up top side. We'll have to see what they think they're going to work off with that vision. like this. You gotta follow each other. I don't want either of them getting too big. Boy Boy and Link on each side kind of need to be stopped from getting to that point where they can take anybody out in a 1v1 or even a 2v1. Boy Boy loves to get into that situation and he'll just keep doing it in the bottom lane at that second tier turret. You might see Curse kind of even put themselves into a split push composition if they can do so and avoid fights. Well, Dexter has spent a lot of time just sitting in this bush waiting yeah. to try and get that combo that we talked about, the Rise plus Jungle mm -hmm. Gank. However, Dominate comes down with Voiboy, Boy, so uh, he scares him off, and all the time spent trying to wait in that bush goes to waste. <laughs> they do know that Dominate is down there, at least. They did gain information on his what position. What a weird game. But there's no way that they could fight it. Oh, you're talking about the, the switch mid. of mid to mid. Duo's mid now. Mid's bottom. Well, it was a good answer in, yeah. the, uh, oh, yeah. uh, in the lane swap there. And having the duo mid would definitely facilitate further invades from the new new jungle. I think we should just have duo mid all the time. New thing. It'd be a lot well, more fighting. It's it's for this team, for Curse, <laughs> since they're such the, the mid game power that we keep talking right, about right. and their team fight power. They're wanting to take control of the jungle so early. It makes tremendous amount of sense for them mm -hmm. uh, because they can send Nunu on dangerous missions and then have the firepower to back it up from the mid lane, very right. close to Rome from there, especially since their mid laner, uh, or one of their mid laners, is gonna be Zillion with the speed up. Half HP for 200 HP. Quas winning these fights two levels up right now on Seraph from being in that lane. We'll see if Seraph can keep himself safe. 66 to 59, the CS is staying there. Seraph's gonna be able to bring good utility to the team. Keep double lift alive. He's at 87 and 91, so he's not gonna be a gigantic Kog'Maw right off the bat. CLG is still kind of scratching out, uh, scratching at an advantage they can get in this one to give themselves objectives. One minute on Dragon and much more. They're gonna need some turrets here for map pressure soon. Let's see if they can actually secure a mid turret before Dragon. Uh, they actually have four of their pink wards down already to try and keep tabs on Dexter. Uh, if Dexter tries to make any aggressive move into Curse territory, they will 100% know about it. So they're effectively bottling up this Evelyn, keeping down Dexter's early game, game-changing potential. He's forced just for a drive-by. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where he is. Having vision on E, very nice. They don't have too many forward pink wards, but they are stopping him. Dexter has a line of wards. He's gonna have to walk through four pink across Curse's side, a line of scrimmage, if you will. Very safe in protecting their own resources, and right now, putting a forward push on mid lane. No pressure to Quas in the top. He's having a great time. Boy Boy's gonna grab up red, and I think we're gonna see a little bit of dragon pressure. Let's see here, what spawns first, blue or dragon? Looks like Dragon will be the key. I don't think Dominic got his red yet. So that means it's going to be Dragon, number one thing to fight over. Going to be very, very hard for CLG to contest that Dragon. Teleport is up for both top laners, yet both top right. laners can stop their counterpart if they decide to try and make it there. This is where we said it gets scary, though, this death squad of Curse. The one bonus is that without Malachi, Boy Boy has to start his own knockup. And they rush right in. Does he have the exhaust off? Boy Boy does. He has not used it just yet. Dexter is the focus here. The teleports are coming in on both sides. Wild Growth has already been used. Curse seems to have the upper hand. Dexter is doing a nice job on the back line. Takes down one. Cop trying to focus the DPS from the outside, and he starts to. Double kill for him. Not a triple kill as Boy Boy picks up the third one to fall. Seraph is just going to have to walk this one out. Can they put him in a box? Looks like he gets out just in time to stay safe. Great fight again from Curse. Dragon stays alive, though. 
Yeah, uh, I guess Soji did yeah. not hesitate to initiate that one. They do come out uh, losing the uh, control of the area, though. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see how the second round goes. I kind of want to look at the replay of the top laners. Uh, oh, I see. Lulu's at under her tower. So there's no way the top laners were going to exchange interrupts. Right. And so instead, they just end up exchanging teleports and both end up down there. Pretty even as far as the kills go. Man, Boy Boy got so close to dying. But no more shots from Double Lift. There's and so much long. chaos from Chris when you have that many people for the other team to focus on. CLG was focusing the right people, but that still left Cop on the outside to just shoot in phosphorus bombs and auto attacks. All right, round two. Here it is. Blue buff first. This is like the calm before the storm. <laughs> <laughs> This is the opening fight for the dragon fight. It's not good, though, to be losing the blue buff. Ah, Seraph is going top. They are giving up this dragon fight. Wise decision from CLG. Uh, there's way too much control of Curse. They cannot walk into yeah. a set-up team fight uh, from this Curse squad. So they decide to give it away. They link us control of the bottom side river. Wow. It's the first game Curse kind of figured out what the plan was and then felt that they could put their foot down. Very strong play so far coming from them. Cop as well, 3-0-1, had a fantastic game. Last game as well in Jinx. Bring around the Rosie here for yeah, Dexter. Yeah, he's playing that smart. CLG have to be so <laughs> careful. This is the point in the game that we're talking about. The massive, massive power swings uh, for all of these cursed champions in the mid game. They've got a Trinity Force. They have their Static Shiv. They have these first key items. Uh, for their two main carries already available. And they've got a Nunu with Max Consume. Oh, man. Again? This one's even two minutes earlier than the last one, Kobe. Seraph might have an inkling. You say, Seraph, we need vision right now. He actually made... He has a sweeper, no wards. He's going to have to face check it. He could be the first victim of this. Quas does not go up with the movement speed. And little old Seraph able to stop the Baron by himself. Little does he know. Huge play right there. The team's able to stay pretty much spread out across the map. Counter-Logic Gaming definitely repairing what happened in the early game from Curse. That first blood was able to come out from Cop, and he has run away with that. Boy Boy's creating pressure with the rest of the team. And those two have been pivotal for Curse's victories here, along with Quas just doing his own thing off on an island throughout each and every game. Yep. He's this time around, though, on the Maokai. When he joins the fight and they start a fight uh -huh. with him, it is going to be a bloodbath. So far, though, Seraph did pretty good, a pretty good job. Uh, he kept his wits about him, able to follow that roam down to Baron's side and stop it. So it looks like the Scrying Orb and Sweepers come out. Vision feels like it in Curse's eyes can be controlled more by denying everything CLG has and slowly moving forward. Man, level 11 Maokai versus the Lulu. Even Maokai able to get the shove on and get lane control. Let's see what Curse can do with the double buff Corky. Yasuo probably going to try and make a solo play down there. Nah, they do. They just got Vision of Evelyn in her own red side jungle because of their deep wards. Might open up some counterplay down here. Negative. Back and forth, yeah. It looks like they want it. They're just backing off right now. I like that, though. Void Boy's old habits were to always go in on the fight, get himself in trouble. He's definitely corrected a few of those, and it really causes him to be one of those huge impact players for the team, because then he does go in at the right moments. Yeah, both those guys did get their early resistance items, so uh, they're happy to just farm against each other. Mm -hmm. Good swing up top. All three members? No, they don't. They pull off X special, but they've got control of the top side. Probably will be the outer turret going down. Blood boil doesn't matter who it's on. <laughs> Helps him taking down those turrets very quickly. Trees don't have blood. Sap boil? I don't think you can change <laughs> the name of the ability based on the champions. It works, though. Gotcha. We'll just go with that, I guess. Look at this, though. Uh, defensive wards up for CLG in their red side jungle. So they're already prepping mm -hmm. for bear and defense. That's what this is. In their red side jungle, they're trying to regain control because of the threat of this... New, new. Max consume. They have to be worried about these barons. Already 18 minutes in, you can see how cautious they're playing. 
Trying to get that early warning system up. Good words from Curse. Keep an eyes on Dexter as they need to. Only with the Lizard finished on his side. He's got the Sight Stone for Vision. They know falling behind a little bit. They need to open up the map with the eyes so they can stop Curse from doing things like this. Woo. Completely prepping the Baron. And they're the only ones with Vision around this area right now. Only Blue Wards. So the thing is, now that Curse have committed uh, these Pink Wards up to this Baron control, yeah. they also need to commit champions to defend those pink wards because they're the stronger team for team fighting they should not let these wards die however they abandon the area <laughs> one will probably get cleared out by clg here even though curse are the stronger team fight right now so even that right there was uh, a big pickup for clg only got one of them though the important one inside the pit <sighs> remains strong there's a ton of wards all the way actually not deep red but on that red side buff as well for CLG. So anything from quite a ways allows Curse to be privy of where CLG is. Mm. 5k gold and more control on buffs, both sides of the map. One just died on red, but Curse can still close in on that if they need to. Curse valuing blue buff steal more than that single pink ward. Mm -hmm. All in all, good decision, good forethought using the timer on that. We'll see how they return to Dragon and then after this next dragon pickup, uh, we'll probably see them go for something. Because CLG, once again, they gave up the last dragon. They're not going to fight this one. What can they get in exchange for it, though? Because CLG should know that uh, they do not want to wait around this dragon. They, the worst thing you can do is just hang around a dragon you know you're going to give up and waste your time there. So trying to make a play on the top side of the map, timing it with this dragon, trying to make the best of a bad situation. But Cop has his defense up. Yep. Or Quas. Cop and Quas. Keeping each other safe. Defense and numbers. He's going to be out of there, though. Dexter got a good mind to start a fight on Cop if they were able to catch him there and pinch in from mid lane. Curse taking an uncontested dragon now. And really, a little bit of time of this use for CLG to grab vision on the Baron. But it's not something they can hold as well. So they're just biding their time for Curse to make a mistake here. No initiations are going to be coming from them. So the trade ended up being Pink Ward inside Baron for the Dragon Kill. They didn't quite get the other Pink Ward either. Uh, Dexter was a little bit too worried that he would be collapsed on to get the right. Pixel push. Hey man, five hits is a lot. It's a long time to stay in one place, especially this very squishy Evelyn. Uh, Sight Stone plus Lizard Elder does not let you survive long, especially since Cop on Corky. Double buffs, that is one of the scariest things. Mid-game Corky double buffs is ridiculous because yeah. Corky, yes, he has the, one of the longest cooldowns on his dash, but it also travels the furthest distance. So if he catches you out with a red buff on, very, very dangerous for you. Scorch the ground and pretty much make your day miserable. He's on a good build path right now. Triforce finished, and he's got the pickaxe on top of the scepter. Doing more damage than double lift. Somebody we haven't seen too much of this game. Usually, double lift's involved in quite a bit to get himself going, or the team's helping him. Only two assists there from somebody they're putting quite a big backpack on for the team. Quas using Maelstrom Ooh. to close out the bottom lane and somewhat of a split push that they can activate here. Almost a 1-3-1 one, one with jungle invade. Yeah, Curse are so far ahead that they have a split pushing Maokai <laughs> winning the split push war. Yeah. CLG don't really have a good uh, 1v1 option versus Maokai. No. Nope. They are such a heavy AP team. Quas went early Banshee's Veil. Uh, and Link gets bullied out here. A little bit of vision onto a special. And pressure. So Dexter come up with a flash he crazy has to steal. Go big. He has got to flash. go big to get this Baron. No gap closer over the wall. It's going down quite low. Baron at 1,500 health. That's getting eaten down by Dominate and Curse. Really watching CLG kind of muster about right now. Big damage onto Dexter. The tidal wave is a beautiful disengage, leaving only Quas on the other side of the wall by himself. CLG should be able to make their way away from this. The twisted advance is in range, and so is the last shot. A big one from Cop to take down Dexter. Everybody gets a piece of that on the assist reel, and they're going for top turret. Baron taken again by Curse. Yeah, the commitment of Curse to stay in there, make sure that they're going to get it. They have the confidence of a new new, yeah. new new combo to secure it, so they stay in. And a little bit of a disorganized attempt there from CLG to try and make their move. 
Seraph with a teleport in and immediate flash out while everybody except Dexter peels away. Dexter got a little bit too close there. Wrapping around oh, the opening of the Baron. And, They're doing yeah, everything they gonna, want now. After that point, like, mm -hmm. if you don't make something happen with the Baron hitting curse, uh, you're going to lose oh, right, right. plenty of objectives afterwards because that's really... Full health coming out of the pit. The only kind of advantage that you can get for a team fight uh, right now if you're CLG. Uh, if you work with the DPS of Baron, then maybe you can catch them off guard and work some positioning to your advantage, but no way you're going to contest those towers afterwards. So, curse come up huge. Yeah. 10k gold lead, Baron buff again, 24 minutes in. Expect that shove onto a turret and a tower dive if COG stick around. They are well equipped for this tower oh dive. My word. Even though there's no armor to speak of for Curse right now, they have a zillion ultimates and they have, as Freak would say, tons of damage. Yes, they do. <laughs> boy, boy, level 15. Two levels higher than anybody on Counter Logic Gaming right now. Quas is actually 14. Higher than Link in the mid lane. These guys have so many things playing in their favor. All right, let's see if we can see a flash. Oh, Maokai does not have flashed. Okay, so it would have to be a sped up Maokai. Uh, maybe Zillion speed up Maokai into Twisted Advance on Double Lift. God, he's so if big. that happens, double, this double Lift will get Arcane smashed and Yasuo comboed, and it's pretty much up to Seraph and Afro Moon to keep him alive through that dive, which is definitely going to be a tall task. Tall task indeed. Curse bringing themselves up to that right now, at least for the quarterfinals here. An amazing stretch of play they've had. Coming out of Super Week with three consecutive wins at the end. That was over TSM, LMQ, and Dignitas. Coming into the playoff picture when they were asked, who would you guys want to play against in the playoffs? Curse, Boy Boy is more than happy to say Cloud9. Ooh. Ooh, there's a lot of damage right there. So Curse versus CLG, they feel very confident about this matchup. And it's shown throughout all of their play. Just 25 minutes in, a second time here in a row that see, or Curse has taken Baron before 25 minutes, and it's working beautifully as they just keep doing things in such a strategical fashion. Yeah, so they're going with that split push, uh, relying on Boy Boy to actually keep the pressure on Link. Ooh. There goes a little preview of the tower dive. Boy Boy's not here, so we actually don't get to see the Maokai Vaso combo. However, <laughs> outer turrets are not where CLG will make their last right. stand. As always, it, are, it is the inhibitor turrets, right. uh, where you have the extra added fortifications of the walls to try and funnel them through. And it will be a defense of the Alamo for CLG. See if they can keep it alive long enough for some extra scaling. Double left and link. It's still pretty early in the game, so if people go down, the death timers are not going to be too long. That's something you got to consider here. Curse has definitely made a lot of work in a little bit of time. Now looking to even take over CLG's jungle. Oh, if wow. the rest of Curse had closed in on that, it would have been it. Boy Boy actually does not have an ability to activate Last Breath. He was still looking for a few more Qs, so they get out on this one to fight another day. For CLG as well. Aphromoo is going to get healed up, get some more mana in his bar. They have the disengage here. They don't have too much wave clear, though. Seraph's going to have to be on the front line to do that. Yeah, it's hard for CLG. Even if Seraph goes up for that wave clear. It's dangerous. You know, anyone who gets exposed, Quas is ready to dive them. <laughs> no outer turrets will be saved this day. Boy, boy, going to be the first in the game to 18 if they're able to reach that mark. He has been wreaking havoc. Really putting these games on their back. Curse has been showing well on the big stage here. Best of five series. It's definitely something that these teams said they practiced for. And they had to get themselves into this mindset. Mm -hmm. No more stopping the game after a false level three or something erroneous. Seems to be paying off quite well. And they've kind of stuck with things that are in the, their wheelhouse. It seems like CLG's picks have been a much more reactive in champion select to any of the games that have been played. Yeah, and Curse didn't have to show that much beyond a split-pushing Nidalee strategy. Yeah, right. Um, they didn't reveal too much extra this time around, so Curse pretty much already looking towards Cloud9. Mm -hmm. And no what's going to happen there. Curse are one of the most, have one of the most diverse playbooks of any of the teams in North America. Uh, it's, it's actually a really good matchup for Cloud9 because Cloud9 have been very adaptable themselves and both teams do rely heavily on their mid laners uh, for those game plans. So 
that will be exciting. Uh, but one thing that we'll probably not be getting through are the nidalee split pushes. <laughs> Let's see, though. CLG hey, still have a bit of life in them. The turtle is real. Let's see if they can do it. There's zero reason for them to go outside of their base now. I, they cannot contest the Baron. They, the gold lead was yeah. very iffy for them to contest last time on Baron. There's, and now it's There's so it's much ridiculous. weighing on their minds, Kobe. It, you can tell from the pace of the game. The first game was neck and neck. The second game, Curse seemed to take more footing. This game, CLG has yet to drop one of their towers. Curse is yeah. full bore, 100% for the win here. CLG, they might be tilting a little bit at this point. See, uh, Curse are kind of just reveling in their success at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, they have complete control, and Dexter is a man on a mission <laughs> to get Vision of Baron and pull off a magical steal. However, Pink Ward's oh, visible. So many scary things. Run away. Diving out by himself there. Could have gotten twisted advance there by Quas. No lantern to get him out. A lot of risky moves. Need to be done. That's how CLG keeps themselves in the game, so the mistakes are only going to happen if Curse plays it even better. All right, let's see. Last ditch effort. Dexter is in position. He wants to go for it this time. Still yep. flash available. This could He's be going big. Fight. Going for broke. They get it special quite fast. That's the Zillion ultimate down, and they blew his flash. Do they have the damage? A great wind wall by Boy Boy to shut down a bit of that early DPS to impact the fight. On to Aframu. He's down. Double lift gets the hit. Quas is just way too big. Two levels up right now. Soloing double lift on the backside. A 2v1 for double lift to go down, or rather, on the other side, Link to go down, and Dublin finally falls the ace at Baron. Curse will grab once more. Good attempt from CLG, but just way too much money in the pockets of Curse. Yep. CLG even did some things well in that fight. Absolutely. Uh, the good rune, focus. Rune Prison timed very well from Link. He, he uh, stopped the movements from Voiboy Boy while the uh, very low duration knockup from Quas came out. So that small window of the Arcane Smash, they got the bump. See this but again. But Link already had Boy Boy in a Rune Prison. So Dexter, yeah, one man, he's going to go down there. But they trade it for a special. At that point, it was pretty good. Immediate Rune Prison. Boy Boy doesn't get to ult. Then he gets exhausted by Link. So the follow-up, very good there from CLG. They focus down, take out the Yasuo. But there are too many other threats. Boss by himself is a beast right now. Able to finish off double. That was technically a 4v5. Expecial went down immediately in that fight. And Dexter got his Agony's Embrace off. So the damage was dealt there. Expecial, he's up for the Baron. It's nice for him. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> revived in time to get the buff. Perfect. Now, though, nothing left on the map uh, save for inhibitor turrets. So we will see. We will see, Riv, mm -hmm. the dive. Will we? I just need to be sure one more time. 16,000 gold, Kobe. Astronomical right now, coming out for Curse here. 32 minutes on the clock. Right now, they're very sure that they can pretty much just kind of walk this one in the front door. And what a ride it's been for this Curse team. They started true, off, true, like many of the other North American LCS teams, coming into this split with some roster changes that they would have to work through. Yeah continually switching out the support role as Cop is used to. And they too were aware that they were going to have to work through some growing pains as many of the other teams had to work through. But man, did they have a rough start to the split. But when you end it with an undeniable statistic like eight and two against the top teams in the league, you're bound to be in a position like this at the end of the season. Yeah, and the one thing with that statistic that uh, you can't actually ignore is the fact that it does bring up inconsistency issues yeah. for them because they yeah. did drop those early games to the teams that are not in playoffs. Right. So the question is, you know, what curse will move forward here? Uh, mm -hmm. Will they have, will they keep up these types of performances right. against arguably North America's strongest, the first place? Yep. Cloud nine. Right now they test their chances one more time, peppering the front base of Counter Logic Gaming's first inhibitor turret in what could be the last matchup in this best of five series. Cop throwing out some missiles from the outside. They get the first inhibitor. Quas and Boy Boy go in on each other here. It's gonna be on to Link. Can they take him down? Oh, he gets the last breath. No, actually just gets the last Q, sorry, and the hit for the kill. 
as he flashes in. Seraph's going to be the next target here. Cannot get any whimsy oh! out. He goes down, though, so they're not going to maybe be able to finish this one. We got a very hurt. I will dominate. The inhibitor's down. The pressure continuously created here, and looks like they're going to stay for some damage, Kobe. Aphromu came in for the exhaust to slow him down Whoa. for another tower hit. Double lift, though. It's gonna, he's going to be well oh pressed gosh. to defend this. This is going to be it. They are pushed back to the, the fountain right now. Nexus turrets are falling 34 minutes into the game. A clean sweep on Counter Logic Gaming after the boot camp in Korea. It's not going to be enough to stop Curse. And it's going to be a 3-0 in the best of five quarterfinals. Curse takes out Counter Logic Gaming. like they knew it all along. I think after the first couple of games there, the confidence of the team, you could really see it. It's Set in motion. It's night and day from the beginning of the split when they were sitting in the chairs before games to how they're, how they're acting now. So calm, even after the games, not very animated. This guy, special in his zillion play. Boy Boy and his Syndra and Yasuo play. This guy right here, Kwas, Nidalee, and Maokai coming out huge in these games. Single-handedly helping to win the first game. And Ka sitting right there. Two great games on two different AD carries throughout the matchup. And even more, he played a variety. We're going to get to talk to this guy in just a second. Boy Boy with a great game. Really a kingpin for Curse to come out here. Everybody played amazing. I'll say it again because we've said it before. Curse comes out with...